In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how you'll install and configure your own local system as a learning environment for this course, as well as set yourself up to play around with Couchbase and your own data once you're done. So how do you install Couchbase Server? Well, that's easy enough. Go out to couchbase.com downloads, select Couchbase Server 5, Enterprise Edition, choose your operating system, lots available, and then download and install as required by your particular OS. It's all available to you there in our documentation. Now, of course, if you don't want to touch your metal directly, go out to couchbase.com containers and look at all of the options that you have for working with Couchbase in a more abstract manner using Docker technology. So to configure your machine for this course, again, you're going to set up Couchbase Server Enterprise Edition 5. You're going to do it as a single node running locally running all four services, data, GSI, which is Global Secondary Indexing, FTS, or Full Text Search, and the Query Service. You'll access the UI through localhost 8091. During a basic setup of Couchbase, you're going to run the Setup New Cluster wizard. You'll provide a name for your cluster, along with an administrative username and password, a host name and IP address, paths to your data and index files, memory quotas by service, again, data service, global secondary indexing, full text search, and query. And last, how you want your indexes to be stored, whether a standard manner, which relies partially on the file system, or memory optimized, which ensures your indexes remain in memory for updating. Once you're installed, where do you go from there? Well, again, go to localhost 8091. Now, if you're new to Couchbase 5, you'll notice now that the menu is along the left-hand side. That's a change from prior versions. On this menu, you'll see a dashboard, which is where you can review and monitor cluster-wide statistics. On the server screen, you can add, remove, configure, and rebalance your cluster nodes. On the bucket screen, you will create and manage these top-level data containers we call buckets. On the indexes screen, this is where you can review the global secondary indexes that have been created and are being maintained in your cluster. On the search screen is where you could configure your full text search indexes and aliases. On the query screen, you'll run what we call the query workbench. This is a tool to help you build, run, and save nickel queries. On the XDCR screen is where you would configure and control cross data center replication between clusters. On the security screen is where you would configure the new roles-based access control provided by Couchbase 5. The settings screen provides a variety of cluster-wide settings and also is the place where you would deploy additional sample data sets beyond the sample data that you'll load for this course. The log screen lets you review cluster-wide log files. So if you're new to Couchbase, this term data bucket may be new to you. So a data bucket in Couchbase is a logical container of uniquely keyed documents. You could think of it as a key space or perhaps as a database, but the idea does not map directly to the notion of database as it's used in a traditional old style RDBMS. Logically related documents within a bucket roughly equate to what you might think of as a table. A set of documents, which could be a very large set of millions and billions of documents, that all follow a similar pattern or perhaps all relate to the same application or relate to some common entity being accessed and used by multiple different applications. But as you learn Couchbase, you learn that part of the power of this approach is that the schema is not being enforced upon you by the database itself. The power is in your hands as a developer to shape documents the way that they need to be shaped to evolve your application over time, efficiently. So why then would you ever need more than one bucket? Well, caching, replication, and indexing are all configured at the bucket level in Couchbase. So if you have varying needs across either of these three vectors, then you would move documents into a new bucket or create them in a new bucket. This is also how you would support multi-tenancy from a Couchbase cluster. So how do you load documents into a bucket once you have a bucket? With Couchbase 5, there's this great new tool called CB Import that allows you to bulk load data from multiple formats and sources. You can bulk load JSON documents 
or CSV data. You'll provide on the command line cluster address, a username with permissions for the target bucket, a password for that username, the name of a pre-created target bucket, and then, if you're using JSON, the format of the target data. There's three formats described in the documentation, sample, list, and lines. In this course, you'll have a chance to look at both the sample and the lines format. And then you'd provide a path to the data set. It may be locally on your file system, or you may be piping it in remotely. Last, this tool supports key generation. You can extract data from each document as it's loaded and use that to set up what key should be assigned to that document once it's in the bucket. It's a great tool. We also still support CB Doc Loader, as we have for some time with Couchbase. This tool allows you to load JSON files from a sample archive that follows a format specified by Couchbase. Again, you'd provide cluster address, username, password, the name of a target bucket, in this case, CB Doc Loader will create it if it doesn't exist, and then the memory that's allocated or to be allocated for that bucket, and then a path to a properly formatted archive. To execute a nickel query, well, you can use a command line tool called CBQ. You use that tool and authenticate to your cluster, and then you execute nickel queries from the command line. More likely, you're going to work with a tool called Query Workbench through the Couchbase UI. This visual tool supports code highlighting, schema introspection for your data, as well as visual query plans. To access data in a bucket using Nickel, the data must be indexed. We support what we call a primary index for ad hoc queries against a bucket. It's created by a CBQ or the Query Workbench using this Nickel query. Once you've created a primary index for a bucket, you can throw any query you choose to design against the bucket because all of the fields of all of the documents are being indexed in a basic way. Now, the queries won't be highly performant because it's a very global index, but later on, once you learn how and once you've developed the queries that you need for your application, it's easy, as you'll see, to create a secondary index to drop your query performance into the millisecond and microsecond range. To create a primary index, the index service must be available as well as the bucket to be indexed. If the bucket name happens to have special characters within it, then you use backticks as an escape character in nickel. Now in production, you may well want to drop a primary index because you don't want the maintenance of continuously indexing all fields within your documents, so you simply drop the primary index. Now you can learn all of this and a lot more, including how to create the secondary indexes that you'll ultimately want for highly performant queries, using our free online course, CB110, Intro to Nickel for SQL People. Check it out. To get at the labs and code for this course, from the Learning Management System, you're going to download these two files, the lab workbook PDF and then the course files. Extract the course files to your desktop and then follow the workbook for each lab at the end of each video lesson. If you wish, you can refer to the Customer 360 solution provided within the course files. This is the application that you're otherwise going to build from scratch with your own hands throughout this course. Take the course as you wish. You know your learning style better than anyone, but everything's here already done for you if you want to get through it fast and easy. So is there any more loaded question possible than what IDE should you use? You're going to make your own decision here. For demonstration, I'm going to use Sublime Text, though, in the videos. To test your REST API, of course, there's a number of tools available here as well. I'm going to be doing demonstrations using a great tool called Postman. You may use something else. So what have we learned here? First, Couchbase 5 is easily installed locally for learning purposes. It's supported by numerous operating systems, and you can also use Docker if you'd rather wrap it all in a container. Couchbase supports data, indexing, full-text search, and query services. Buckets, as we learned, are namespaces for uniquely keyed documents. You create a new bucket if you have different caching, replication, indexing, or multi-tenancy needs. They are a uniquely keyed key space, but they don't exactly map over to the notion of a database. 
you can load JSON or CSV data very quickly into a bucket from multiple formats using the CB import tool. You might also use a tool called CB Docloader. Nickel queries can be executed either using the command line tool CBQ or the query workbench. Last, we saw that you need to create a primary index to support ad hoc nickel queries. You might drop it though in production because you don't want the overhead of maintaining it and you'll have determined the queries that you need and no doubt created secondary indexes to support them and take their operating speed down to millisecond and microsecond levels. So in the lab for this lesson, you're going to install Couchbase, create a bucket, load your data, create a primary index, and install any tools that you might need. Now once you've done this, you'll have access to the Couchbase UI as we see here. It'd be a good idea to take just a minute to look through the various screens and get familiar with them. Although for this course, we'll be looking here in the bucket, specifically the Customer 360 bucket for the most part, and the various documents that it contains once you've loaded them from the command line. Once you're done with that, come on back. We have a lot of fun ahead walking you through the creation of a REST API we're going to call Customer 360 playing with the PHP SDK. Stick around.